Last week, a BBC reporter asked Elon Musk if he regrets any of the tweets that Elon has made. Elon responded by saying he's shot himself in the foot so often that he needs bulletproof shoes. Then yesterday, he launched a spaceship. way to prevent self-sabotage. I know when I was a younger man, that was a problem for me. I've, I've, I would have golden opportunities presented for me, and because of bad decision-making or just plain irresponsible behavior, I would screw them up, and I had done that a few times. So I learned to put in place a kind of, you know, a set of bulletproof shoes of my own, and it's just a matter of sometimes getting behind myself and pushing. My latest project, my latest endeavor, has been about making videos and photography. And my photography skills have gotten to the point where I'm beginning to really like my own pictures. And as for my videos, I'm slowly but surely you know, developing an audience. Now I'm no Mr. Beast, but I'm very close to being monetized on YouTube. And I post on five other platforms as well. That would be TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, BitChute, and Twitter. And if you add up the views that I get on all of those platforms, it's sometimes as much as three times as many people watching than what I get on YouTube. So yeah, I'm having a little success at that. And this morning, I felt like saying, you know what, I, I'm just getting old, I don't want to do this anymore. You, Charlie Hub, our 73-year-old grandfather, retired from the New York City Fire Department. Where on earth do you think you get off making videos and becoming a photographer at your age? I mean, the model behind you there on that Gucci ad is younger than your grandchildren. <laughs> That's kind of what's going on in my head right now. A few weeks ago, I started making videos about ways that uh, ways of living that have worked well for me, that have contributed to what I think has been a pretty successful life. And uh, those videos have done well for the most part. Uh, and I've talked about things like uh, generosity, living a life uh, in contribution, uh, outrageousness, you know, being a little crazy sometimes and, you know, reaching for big goals, but keeping those goals within reason, making sure that the goals are attainable, uh, and other aspects of life like that. And it was my plan today to come and talk about uh, just how they've been working for me, those, those ways of living have been working for me. Because you see, given that I've been talking about them with you all, I've been thinking more about them and applying them to my life, and it's really worked in a lot of ways. And it was my plan to make a video about just how they're working in my life today. And, you know, I, I got up and I'm just in this shit mood. I mean, I'm like, really? Uh, you know, we've all had those kind of days. And I decided to make a video anyway, because that's part of living, too. And, you know, how do we how do we deal with that? Uh, there's no particular reason why I feel this way. I mean, health wise, I'm fine. Everything in my life and family, things are going good. I, I just heard from a daughter back in the States who's doing well also. So sent me some, some uplifting pictures. There's no reason for, for, for me to be in a negative mood, but yet I am. So, you know, I'm acknowledging that. Not only am I acknowledging it to myself, I'm putting it up here for anybody who looks at my videos to see as well. So what do you do about that? I, uh, for about a year of my life in 1994, I was a professional writer. I was still in the fire department, but I, uh, the a newly appointed commissioner asked me to be his speech writer. And it was a nice opportunity for me to work at the top of the food chain in the fire department for a while. And, uh, you know, I did a lot of other stuff other than write speeches, although he did do a lot of speaking. And I would come in very early in the morning, sit down at my desk, and be in a mood far worse than I'm in now. Uh, I mean, you know, just overworked, overstressed. You know, in your younger days when you're working hard and, you know, raising families and that kind of stuff, that's when the stress kind of builds up. And I was feeling it. And I would sit down at my desk and have three speeches to write that day or that morning. 
And I would do it. I would sit down and start writing. And, and so I decided, and I would get the job done. So I decided to do that with this video today. I had planned it. I was thinking about it. So I decided to come to the place where I like to shoot videos and, and, and make one anyway. So every once in a while you have to get behind yourself and push. I'm gonna make that video about how those ways of living have been working for me in a really positive way pretty soon, but not today. Today, I just wanna let you know that, you know, when you're not feeling that great, you know, get up, put your shoes on, put your boots on, get out the door and get behind yourself and push. Now, I'm not smart enough to know why that psychological phenomena sometimes occurs for me, but I've learned to push past it. And apparently, I'm not the only one. Seeing Elon Musk say that he needs bulletproof shoes was a helpful thing for me to hear because I, at least I know successful people deal with the same thing. Sometimes doing things that aren't in their best interest, for me, it's more a feeling type of thing. And I could very often, you know, remedy it just by, you know, getting up and putting one foot in front of the other and getting behind myself and pushing a little bit. So all of you out there, all of you people that are not that fond of Elon who are about to type into the comments section about how his rocket ship blew up, yeah, it was a test rocket. It made it nearly 40 miles into the air. It was the heaviest rocket ship ever built. So when you build a heavyweight rocket ship that makes it to 41 miles in the air, then let me know of how you are superior to Elon. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.